All right, let's look at uh, batteries and circuits and the difference between EMF and terminal voltage. Now, if we look at your basic design for a battery, you have an EMF. Now, EMF is not uh, a force. It's, it stands for electromotive force, but it's not measured in newtons. It's actually measured in volts. It's also not your terminal voltage. VAB is your terminal voltage, and this is the positive end of the battery. That's the negative end of the battery. And let's look at another way that you would see the battery. And this would be like your car battery or um, lawnmower battery. And you'd have a terminal here, terminal here. That might be positive, that might be negative. Now the positive terminal is called the cathode. And the negative terminal is called the anode. And you can remember this by... A cathode has the T in it, so that's a positive sign. And I always remember this as A, negative node, so A is negative. Um, you can also think back to chemistry with cation and anion. Um, positive ion and anion is A, negative ion. Uh, so you can use those words to kind of help you remember cathode and anode. Now, EMF is electromotive force. It's not measured in newtons, though. It's not a force. It is a potential. And the terminal voltage is the voltage between the terminals. If the battery is not connected to a circuit, your EMF is equal to your terminal voltage. So EMF equals VAB. But as soon as you have a circuit, you have internal resistance, and your EMF is no longer equal to your VAB. I think of it like this. Your EMF is the voltage that the battery wants to be at. So let's just say uh, you have a 9-volt battery or a 6-volt battery or a 1.5-volt battery. That's your actual voltage, the, the voltage that you want the battery to operate at. But it's not always going to operate at that voltage. Um, over time the internal resistance is going to increase when the battery dries out and the chemical reactions are uh, nearing their end. And as the battery gets older, your EMF is going to stay the same, but your terminal voltage is going to decrease. So the terminal voltage is the actual voltage on the battery, and the EMF is the voltage that you want the battery to stay at at all times. So in a problem... We look at it kind of like this. Uh, Ohm's law is V equals IR, and the terminal voltage, the voltage that the battery is actually going to have, it's always going to be less than the EMF by a factor of the internal resistance of the battery. So I, you can think about the equation logically as the terminal voltage is equal to the EMF minus the... Uh, IR, which is the internal resistance caused by the chemicals in the battery. VAB is also equal to I times R. So we can set these two equal to each other. E minus IR um, is equal to capital IR. Solving uh, for E and just moving IR to the other side. E is going to be equal to IR plus IR. Factor out I, and you have R plus little r. Now, this R is the resistor. It could be a light bulb or a um, toaster, anything that is causing resistance or load in the circuit. And this lowercase r, that's the internal resistance caused by the chemicals inside of the battery. So for I... I is going to be equal to E divided by R plus R. Now we have current. We didn't have current before. Um, we needed to find VAB. But we made a substitution. We just basically used an identity and said that if this is equal to this and this is equal to this, then this side has to be equal to this side. That's a transitive property. If VAB equals this, VAB equals that, then this has to be equal to that. And then we got rid of VAB. But now we're going to plug I back into this original equation and solve for VAB. 
and that's E minus I R, and then you can get the value for AB. So this is the voltage that your battery would initially be at when you purchased it, say a 9 volt battery. And that's minus the current times the internal resistance. Over time, this little uh, this current's going to go down, your internal resistance is going to go up, and um, what that, what that's going to cause is for this value to be less. So your VAB, your terminal voltage, is going to be less. Uh, that is always going to be the same. Um, now, after that, you can calculate the power dissipated across the large resistor, and power is equal to um, I squared R, and then you can calculate the power dissipated across the internal resistance, and that is the power that is being lost caused by the internal resistance of the battery. Now, there's one other thing that I want to talk about, and that is, uh, let's say that you are going to your car in the morning, you have a regular uh, old-fashioned gas-powered combustion engine with a car battery. Now, you crank up your car, and the lights go dim, and then your car cranks up. Now, um, if, if that happens, this is what's happening with the battery. You turn the switch on the car, and your circuit is drawing a large amount of electrons from the battery all at the same time. When that happens, your uh, voltage is actually changing, as is your current. A large current is being drawn from the battery rapidly. Now, the thing about current is that current is going to be different depending upon the number of resistors in the circuit, but voltage is nearly always the same. In this case, your voltage is decreasing because the chemical reactions can't happen as fast as the electrons are being drained from the battery. So your lights dim, and then your motor kicks in and everything's normal. So sometimes um, your voltage is going to vary, but for the most part, a battery provides a constant voltage source, but your current is going to depend upon what the circuit is made up of. So what elements are inside of the circuit. So in a, in a circuit, your current can change depending upon what you have in the circuit, but your voltage is pretty much always going to be the same. So a battery is a constant source of voltage and a non-constant source of current. 